This is the Four on Fivers uh, podcast, as always, on the Odyssey Sports Podcast Network with 95.7. The game coming at you twice a week here in the offseason. 49ers, um, you know, kind of kind of moving around their, their summer schedule, Mark. Mandatory minicamp closing fast and uh, a couple practices the next few days. So we'll have that to react to on Thursday. I look forward to that as well. Uh, Mark, Randy, Evan Giddings with you as always. Download the Odyssey app, download the podcast, wherever you get your podcast from. But uh, the next part about this, Mark, is you know, kind of along the lines of where the 49ers roster is, where their direction is, and what is expected of them this season. Uh, Albert Breer, who writes a column every week for the Monday Morning Quarterback, kind of identified the 49ers as being – a 2023 all-in team. Like, they got to go all-in on this year. And we've discussed reasons why we feel like that is, in some ways, accurate. Uh, but should they be? I mean, should this be an all-in year? And I guess it depends on your definition. But to me, the definition would be, you know, the 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 Rams' approach of throwing picks sure. to the wind and trying to go out and get a couple of big boys, whether it be before the season, middle of the season, to maximize this window and saying whatever happens down the line is okay because even if it doesn't go great, we're going to try and go for the Super Bowl. Yeah, I think you're right. It depends on your definition of all in. Uh, when we've been talking about the the Christian McCaffrey trade and I guess even trading up to get Trey Lance, I think I've thrown out multiple times, you know, the four janitors are showing that they are all in to try to win. Now. I don't think that necessarily means just for this one season. I think it means in the next three years. So if they were going all in to win the super bowl, the 2024 super bowl, the one coming up uh, in what, like eight months, if they were going all in to do that, then they should be trading their draft picks for next year's NFL draft to get more talent on this roster. That would be going all in for this coming season. It would be not signing Nick Bosa, Nick Bosa to an extension right now because you're not worried about anything beyond this year. That, that would not be how this works. Um, but the 49ers are planning for more than just this one year, Evan. So if I were to adapt the definition of all in or just say, it's for a window of the next three years. Yes, I think absolutely the 49ers should be all in to try to give, make sure they give themselves the best chance possible to win at least one Super Bowl over the next three years. But they should not be punting on the opportunity to improve their roster through the draft or by other means for next year or even the year beyond next year just to try to win it this year, if that makes sense. I'm looking at a three-year window a three-year experience here where the 49ers need to do what's in their power to make that possible but you don't want to hurt yourself for next year by trying to do it all this year the Niners are not in the position the Rams were in when they got that Super Bowl they didn't have all these aging veteran stars the, the Rams had those the 49ers have some of them but for the most part they still have young controllable talents who are likely going to be productive at the NFL level for years to come. You do not want to mess with that. And if you miss your one shot this year, then you're done. You're trying to maximize a three-year window. And in my mind, the 49ers should be all in for that window, not just for this one coming year. But I guess then I would say the three-year window, like, yes, that, that is ideal to have a three-year period where you can compete for Super Bowls. And they've kind of done that. I mean, from mm -hmm. 2019 making the Super Bowl, 2020 marred by injuries, 2021 you make the NFC Championship. Last year, of course, the same result. So within a four-year period, you have you have been able to be, quote-unquote, all in over multiple seasons. I do wonder where that train stops. And I, I don't, I'm, I'm with you. I don't think that the 49ers should be all in this season. But I do kind of, I, I do wonder where Kyle Shanahan sees himself because right now, Mark, if if that three year window is accurate, and I do think the 49ers want to plan for the future and not just say, hey, we throw all, throw all of our picks to the wind, even though they have more replenished this year, their first and seconds return uh, this upcoming draft. I, you know, Kyle Shanahan in three years is going to be looking at 10 years in San Francisco. And that's a long time potentially to be without a Super Bowl and still in this day and age be a head coach even though he's had the success that he has. So, you know, that that window to me 
is ideally three seasons, but I think that could change very quickly. Yeah, no, it can. I mean, who knows what the next three years are going to hold. There was a, a thought, actually, when I was listening to the show you work on, Steiny and Guru, earlier today uh, on 95.7 The Game, uh, the guys were talking about, and it was mostly Steiny's point, about how Kyle Shanahan uh, and his quarterbacks generally are just good enough to lose you the big game. They're good enough to get you there, but lose that game. And in my mind, my, my thought went to, well, Kyle Shanahan is doing just enough as a head coach to where he won't be fired, but he still hasn't won a Super Bowl. And you kind of feel like at least that's going to happen where he's going to have enough regular season success. He's going to win a handful of division titles. He's already won a couple. You feel like he's in line to win another one this coming year if things do break the right way. You feel like he should be able to get at least, you know, a, a third seed in the NFC and host a playoff game and win a playoff game again. And perhaps he goes to another NFC championship game like he's doing enough to keep his job safe. But you're right. He hasn't been able to win that big one yet. I also think it would be a little bit of a different scenario, Evan, say if the 49ers had a legitimate star at quarterback. And of course, that changes your entire roster construction because invariably so much of your money is going to be tied up at that one position. You're going to have to make cuts and tough decisions elsewhere. But generally, you see teams like the Rams go all in if they have a star at quarterback who is getting older and is maybe on the tail end of his career. I know Stafford, maybe you wouldn't call him a superstar, uh, but a really good quarterback. And he was no doubt a big reason why the Rams won the Super Bowl. I mean, they were bad without him. They acquired him and then they won the Super Bowl. Um, the 49ers aren't really in that position where they feel the pressure where they are. Our quarterback, he's getting up there. If we want to try to win it with him and he gives us the best chance because our backup is John Wolford or whoever the Rams other quarterback was. Of course, he replaced Jared Goff. Um, but. The 49ers aren't in that position. They have some time with their quarterback room, despite the fact that it's filled with question marks. They have time there, so they don't feel that pressure to risk future opportunities uh, to make things work just this one coming year. Uh, so I don't know exactly what their mindset is. Of course, they're not trying to empty the cabinet, and when 2027 comes around, they're going to be at a loss. But I do feel like there is a sense inside the organization, we better get one in the next few years. Because if we don't, Trent Williams is going to move on. Who knows what Debo Samuel is going to be? Who knows uh, if George Kittle will still be a 49er? Uh, you never know what the future holds. So I do think there is some pressure on Kyle Shanahan. Maybe he's feeling it from a contract point, from a you know just a selfish point of view. He's got to get one in the next few years because if not, you start getting to that point, as you're mentioning, where it's, all right, how much longer is it going to take? We just missed our best chance potentially. And then what does the franchise do from there? Well, and that's why if you're talking about the mindset of the 49ers, how I have always looked at the combination of Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch since we've had the chance to, to cover them more intimately is an educated, aggressive mindset. Uh, you know, if you want to call it, um, I mean, just slightly aggressive, like like they, they pick their spots. So that educated aggression to me manifests itself in an opportunity like last year. Christian McCaffrey, you would say you're throwing a bunch of picks at Carolina and that's going all in. Well, contextually, you knew you had multiple picks coming back to you because of D'Amico Ryan's probably getting a head coaching job of... Rand Carthan probably getting a front office position. Of course, other minority uh, minority front office members and coaching staff members replenishing some picks. So in reality, you're giving up a second round pick for Christian McCaffrey, not everything after. Trey Lance is an educated, aggressive move because at the time, you were trying to figure out how you could, of course, upgrade the quarterback position without needing one potentially immediately. Mm -hmm. And that's where you feel like you can go all in for uh, Jimmy Garoppolo in 2017. 
that's an opportunity to get with a second round pick, a quarterback, and not have to worry about the free agency class upcoming, which is outside of Kirk Cousins, Drew Brees, who wasn't going anywhere, Case Keenum, and Teddy Bridgewater. So you're really out of quarterback options if you want to try and get one in the market. That's where they get aggressive, educatedly, for Jimmy Garoppolo. Trent Williams, third round and a fifth round pick in 2020. That might, at the time, look like a big number for an offensive lineman in his 30s. But if you're getting the best guy in the game, that's a great that's a great buy. And then you look at some of the, the trades where they maybe weren't as rewarded for their aggression. Emmanuel Sanders, a third and a fourth. Of course, it was fine, but didn't, of course, get you a, a Super Bowl title. D. Ford, that one did not work out for the 49ers, in which they sent a second-round pick to Kansas City. But each of those last two were, again, aggressive for the time, not just going all in. And we even saw it, we even saw it in this year's draft. I mean, they traded up to get Jair Brown. They traded to get Jake Moody. Um, they, they use their picks selectively and in an educated fashion to go out and f- identify players that like you're talking about can not just help you now, but also help you in the near future. If you're looking to extend your Super Bowl window. So if Albert Brewer is saying the 49ers should be all in for this season, I do believe that there is a lot of expectation for this year. There's a lot of pressure for this year, but I don't think there's pressure enough for the 49ers to say in a Rams-like fashion, F those picks. We're going to throw the first from this year, next year, the year after that, to go out and try and get a big boy, even if there is one out there, which I don't believe there is right now. Yeah, no, I mean, I I think you're right. The way that the 49ers are approaching this, it's calculated risks where you you are picking and choosing. You're, you're finding the spots where you feel like you can gain an advantage. The McCaffrey one is the one that stands out to me. It wasn't a gigantic pick haul, really, and the 49ers are perfectly fine with that. The contract worked out to the 49ers' favor, especially last year. It is a little bit more this year, but it's nothing that they can't handle. That is good, calculated aggression, but they're not going to go... Uh, crazy with, you know, again, emptying the cupboard, emptying the cabinet and trying to get the best possible team they could because they there are moves out there, Evan. This team could be better if they were willing to give up opportunities for future seasons, flexibility for future seasons. You could go out and improve this team. You could trade picks next year. You could trade Trey Lance, if you really wanted to, I don't know what that would get you, but there are moves that this team could make to try to get better for this season. They could be flexible and and be uh, creative with you know the salary cap and moving money around and and paying certain players more next year and future years. Just push the problem down the road. Let's try to win it all right now. So I don't know if that's what Albert Breer was suggesting the 49ers should do or if he just is simply defining all in in a different way. But the 49ers are not all in in that sense, nor should they be. Because, again, they have a chance to win for multiple seasons. They could, hell, if things break right, they could win multiple Super Bowls. I know that's getting way ahead of ourselves, but they have built a franchise and a roster full of talent that can support not just one shot in the dark Super Bowl. This could be something that gets them multiple championships. Again, things have to go well, extremely well for that to even happen, even for them to get one. But their goals, I think, are more than just, we're running out of time here. We got one final shot. Let's take it. They have a few more chances left, and they're going to maximize those few chances as opposed to just one. Yeah, I think they're trying to be sustainable. Uh, instead of and, and give yourself multiple cracks at it because you never know yeah. there could be a massive amount of injuries that hit the 49ers this year and so if you go all in on this season that could be derailed but if you open up your window like we're talking about and try and create I think as they've done during the Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch era smart contracts smart trades smart draft picks uh, you widen your window for contention and then let's be honest you try and fall into something and ideally you make your run to to a, a hopeful Super Bowl. This is the 415ers podcast. Sorry, Mark. Oh, I was just going to say the other thing is it's also something where you can 
uh, go into a season not sure exactly what you're going to do. And then when the trade deadline comes, things change. You have new information. You decide at that point, okay, you know what? We're a move away. We can win it this year. We're one move away. We'll trade our first round pick next season and we'll do We'll, we'll try to go quote unquote all in. It's not a decision you need to make now. It's also also something that can be decided once you have a little bit more information when you're eight, 10 weeks into the season. And then you can redecide is this worth this? Are we giving up future possibilities to try to win this year? Or is this worth it to try to get one right now?